We all have not had access to our hometown. Kuvana Chief Priest supports Rota's Okorota's plea for the leads of Mazen Namdekano. Just like what I said yesterday, and I still repeat myself, Obadi Godoro, according to Kuvana Chief Priest, said for the past five years, he never assessed his hometown. These are the people who turn their backs against the Biafra simply because of the cheap penny or the cheap popularity they are getting from the zoo. They claim that the zoo loved them. But in return, you find out that the zoo never loved them, not even a bit. It is wide open now that Kubana chief priest, Obi Kubana, Joey Zaza, and many more now are running around to speak out over what is happening in Biafra land. I know it will get to this point. And that is why I never bothered to call out any of them on all my previous videos. Even if I made a comment concerning them, but I never called them out in any, uh, any of my videos because I know one day or a day like this will come when we will separate chaff from the wheat. Ubi Kubana calling for the Martin Mandokan release. After how many years of abduction? After how many years of this guy being illegally detained and incarcerated for no reason? Kubana chief priest is now at the helm of the affairs. That means people have been waiting for somebody like Rota Sokrocha to make a comment so that they can beckon on that statement to make their own. And I see waiting for a lot of people. The likes of uh, Emeka Ofo, I know he wouldn't call because Emeka Ofo and uh, Ifan Yuba is working against the people of Biafrans. Atwes Enugbo is working against the Biafrans. I know why I'm calling out these names. These are the people who have vowed that the Southeast will never be good at their own expense. Because if Southeast is good, they will not be receiving the kind of money or support they are receiving from the zoo government. They are the ones that vow that their friends can never breathe unless they go down to six feet. If I know once said that, he inaugurated an Anambra Vigilante uh, service just to fight against the Biafra Liberation Army and also ESN. Just like what they did with Ebubago and, uh, sorry, Ebubatoro. Today, all those people he have inaugurated, all those people he have made them to understand that he is the Earth, Alpha and Omega. All of them now are struggling to make a living. Both the side of Umpurum Milio and the side of uh, uh, Banditry. When the mother hen is killed, then the chicks scattered. That is the issue on ground now. Kubana chief priest and his organ, Ubi Kubana, is now at the forefront calling for the Biafrans to support Mazen Namdekano, Simon Ekpa, and every other person that is fighting for the independence of our people. They are coming out one after the other. Another one. It is despicable, childish and criminal. ex presidential and slams Fulani government. And IPOB over killings in the Southeast. All these people are calling out simply because Roach has made a statement. If Uzo Dimba made this kind of statement, nobody will react. If the view of my medical assessment, nobody will react. If in just some weekend, medical assessment, nobody will react. For you to know that some people have been needed to speak. And when they speak, things begin to fall in place. Rochas have made a remark. Only that word he said in that if I know bars validatory season at the National Assembly. It can change things. We have white beard goat called Eji Naib Ribe. He has made comments so many times. Nobody dare to take him seriously because they know that one is a flame. 
Obia Gocha using Nam de Kano to be relevant in the call for 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 for, for his release. Bianco Jugu using the call of Mazen Nam de Kano to get an appointment. These are the charlatans we have in that southeast. That their cause means nothing to anybody. In fact, when they speak, even the witches and wizards begin to say, Tefiakwa, Tefiakwa. <laughs> so this one is um, somebody Ude, if I'm not mistaken. Jackson Ude, don't come out again. Simply because Rochas made a statement. Many police feared killed as gunmen go on rampage in other states. Many policemen being killed. Exactly what Oti said. The charlatans we have in the likes of uh, Oju Zokalo, Tioda Kahlo, Benjamin Kahlo, you see these names I'm calling? They are the reason why the insecurity and killings persist in the Southeast. Do not forget, Benjamin Kahlo made a statement, and I'm still waiting for Oji, waiting for um, Alex Oti to hold this guy responsible for the insecurity in the in, the, in, a, in other state. He made a statement. He says he can never be alive and become the number six in Nigeria while another party governs his own state. It is high time. The police, I know they own police, but it's high time Alex Oti calls him out to come and explain what it means. All these things is just to destabilize his government so that 2027 they will use it to campaign against him. That is what is playing out. APC, all the old APC stakeholders in other states and the federal capital territory, they are the ones killing their own people in other states just to indict OT, IPOBs, Biafrans, Nam the Kano, and Egba. You see what happened? The two military uh, men that were that was that was killed. After they keep on shouting, it no be friends, no peace. They are not their friends. They are not they are not even Igbos. They are being taught. And they are just doing the work which they have been contacted to do. To indict IPOP, to indict IPA, to indict Nam the Kano, and to, to indict the whole Igbos in general. Killings of unkillings. Just to make sure that. OT doesn't perform. Because when he's about to perform, they will take out his attention from that performing and channel it to insecurity. With the help of Abuja, they are destabilizing the government of OT and also killings the Biafrans. Because any killings call for a repressal attack. Those repressal attacks, the target, the target is always the youth of Biafrans. Who is going to multi who will multiply the population of the Biafrans? Military and police are going for the pressure attack in the southeast. If they see the old people, they will leave them and looking for the youth to murder. The same way they murdered two businessmen in Abia State. The same way they murdered Iboja in Enugu State. The agenda is to cripple the economy of the southeast reduce their population, and to make sure that when they are calling for cessation, then they will tell the world that this population cannot hold. Let me tell you the fact. There are some countries that is in existence today that are not up to 1 million, and they are doing well. Most of strong countries in the world today, they are not up to even 20 million, and they are doing amazingly well. Go and check uh, Finland, what are the population of Finland? Ghana, what are the population? South Africa, what are the population? All these people combined together, two states in the southeast, their population overshadowed all these ones. But they are doing amazingly well. They are killing the futures of Biafrans. They are killing the future generations of Biafrans. Leaving the old ones behind who cannot barely even, even their monopause or, or uh, uh, woman opus, all of them don't seize. Ethnic cleansing agenda. 
Islamizing and fulanizing. His property or family inheritance, that is the question they are asking in Dume. Nigerians react as in Dume begged Senate to allow a family of Bass widow to replace him as a senator. So that senatorial, senatorial way they represent people. Now it is a property of uh, Ifani Uba and his, and his uh, uh, concubines and wives, or rather his inheritance. Imagine that kind of rubbish. I beg you, let us go straight to the reason why we are here. Like, share, comment, and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos coming your way. Obi, Kubana, and Kubana chief priest. Celebrity barman, Oketuku Pascal, better known as uh, Kubana chief priest, has joined former governor of Imo State, Rochas Okorawosa, in the plea for the release of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB Namdekano, from detention. Recall that Namdekano has been detained since June of 2021, when he was kidnapped in Kenya and subjected to extraordinary rendition during the administration of uh, Bola, sorry, uh, Muhammad Buhari. Speaking at the night of the tribute held in honor of late Nigerian Senator Ifani Oba, on Monday night, Ukurausa urged the Senate President Goswila Kwabio to plead with the Fulani government for the release of Namde Kano, who is at the center of peace in the Southeast. Taken to his Instagram page, Kubana joined the plea, stating that many Igbos have not had access to their hometown for almost five years. He noted that only the release of Martin Namdekano can restore peace to the region, adding that so many lives and properties have been lost. He wrote, as Senator Akbabio, those plea from Owele Ndibo is all we ask for, our dear in law. Let Ahmadi Kendibu, Mazi Namdekano, come out home. Sorry, come back home soon. It is almost five years. Now we all have not had access to our hometown. Only his release can restore peace back in our region. We have lost so much lives and properties. We need to build back Southeast ASAP. Make on a help us. This kind of plea will make them to tighten their hearts. I can assure you. From the one they begin to know that the, the insecurity in the southeast is being centered on the head of Martin Namdekano, they tighten the key they used to hold Martin Namdekano. Because they don't want peace in the southeast. They want to create the economy both outside the southeast and inside the southeast. Go and see what is happening in Lagos State. Landing for market now, who is 99% dominance of Igbo, Igbo tribe, their friends, have been taken over from them. I mean, the chairmanship, the Z Escos have been given to Eurobars. <laughs> it is despicable and childish and criminal, according to ex presidential aide Jackson Ude. Jackson Ude, the former director of strategy and communications for President Goodluck Jonathan, has lampooned the Fulani government over the continuous killings of Igbos in the southeastern part of the country. He described the irresponsible, despicable, and dangerous, the lack, the lackluster attitude of the federal government towards the bloodshed and denial of rights or freedom of citizens as a result of the sit-at-home order enforced on the people of the Southeast by the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB. The former presidential aide also expressed his disappointment with the silence of Ohanese Ndi Beribe, why the Igbos are being killed by a few armed individuals. Who then condemn IPOB's at home policy, describing it as detrimental and counterproductive to the very people the group purports to defend. In a statement attributed to him and made available to newsmen on Wednesday, who they condemn the persistent killings of innocent Igbo individuals under the pretext of enforcing sit at home order, labeling such actions as reckless and perilous. He contended that these measures deprive individuals of their livelihood, particularly in a context of widespread poverty and hunger, thereby exacerbating insecurity in the region. The communication specialist advocated for a political resolution with the Biafra agitation 
encouraging activists to redirect their efforts towards democratic avenues. He proposed the establishment of a political platform to elect representatives capable of advocating for a referendum on the issue through legislative channels. Furthermore, they call for the immediate release of the embattled leader, uh, uh, embattled uh, IPOB leader, Namdekano, asserting that his release could facilitate the cessation of the seat at home orders and alleviate tensions in the region. He emphasized the urgent need to alleviate the sufferings of the populace to avert further disorder. Moving forward. He said the continuous killings of Igbos by Igbos under the guise of enforcing a sit-at-home order to press a Biafra state is highly irresponsible and condemned. All well-meaning and patriotic Igbos must rise up in unison and condemn the wanton killings of Igbos in the southeast Nigeria. Our people have not done anything wrong going about in search of their daily bread at a time poverty and hunger has enveloped the country. How does it make sense to continue denying the people you seek to protect their daily means of livelihood by enforcing a sit-at-home order? Turn around and kill them and then claim to be protecting them. The most civil way to achieve this Biafra state is to use the political party platform, elect people into the state house of assembly in the south and have them all align a referendum for a Biafra state. The idea that a Biafra state can be achieved through a sit-at-home order and continuous killings of our people is not only childish but criminal. Let me correct this impression here, uh, Jason Ude. Nobody wants to achieve Biafra through sit-at-home. Sit-at-home is a, is a kind of protest. Everybody has a way of protesting. I don't even know why these people are, are, are ignorant of the truth. When we protest on the street, they will, ha they will hire armed men to assassinate the Biafrans, to massacre them in numbers. Now we decide to do our own protest by ignoring Monday's market to sit on our different homes. And you say it is nonsense. Nobody is looking for Biafra. They said, we are protesting. Leave Mazen Namdekano alone. We release him from the detention. And to have the federal government watch and allow citizens from the southeast de deny their rights to freedom and killed without appropriate measures to protect them is despicable, irresponsible, and dangerous. I am also thoroughly disappointed in the lost, uh, lackluster attitude of the silence of Ohanese Nduri while our people are killed by few armed individuals. The bloodshed is too much, and the sufferings of the people are in double jeopardy. Must be halted. We must intensify the call for the immediate release of Mazi Namdekano. This is one way the shenanigans of the sit at home enforcers will end. If this does not stop, another insurgent group might begin the protection of our people from the sit at home enforcers. It's situation. That might, that might throw the whole region into serious chaos. Igbos have suffered enough. Many fear day that gunmen run go rampage in Abia State. An unspecified number of police officers were reportedly killed early this morning by armed gunmen in Ohafia local government area of Abia State. Nigerians understand that the attack occurred around 7.30 a.m. in Ebem Asaga area of Aba. Details of the incident remain unclear, but I witnessed the close to the sun that residents flee the area in panic as the government wreaked havoc. The once bustling community is now largely deserted as fear grieves the locals. This tragic event comes just two days after another violent attack claimed the life of a police officer. This one is the second time they are attacking police post. Two officers assigned to Honorable Ginger Owusibe, a member of the House of 
representatives representing Isi Arangwa North and South constituency were ambushed on Sunday night in Omaha. The attack, which occurred around 8.30 p.m., left one officer dead from multiple gunshots, while another officer and a driver managed to escape. Attempt to read the public, uh, police public relations officer Maureen Chinaka for an official statement are ongoing. The last but not the least, his property or family inheritance, Nigerians react as Ndume begs Senate to allow Ifan Yuba's widow to replace him as senator. Some Nigerians have queried the lawmaker representing Bruno South, Alain Dume, who pleaded with the Senate to allow widow of the late senator, Ifan Yuba, to replace him as the representative of Anambra South Senatorial District. Nigerian News reported that Ndume argued that it is necessary to preserve Uba's legacy and aspirations through his family. Ndume made the appeal during the parliamentary session held on Tuesday in honor of the late senator. Citing his, his uh, historical uh, presidents, Ndume argued that such a move will honor the late senator's contributions to the Senate and ensure continuity in representing his constituency. However, the main suggestion earned him criticism from Nigerians, questioning if political offices are hered hereditary or family property. Achim underscore D wrote, I don't understand. Succeed him as per what? His property or family inheritance? This country itself. <laughs> At Ref Follow uh, Yan said, uh, is the Senate seat a monarchy? Which one be succeed him? Kevin underscore has wrote, a widow that should be mourning her husband. You are admitting for her to rep represent. Hmm. Oh, that means on key him to get the widow close to honor. Abby? <laughs> because this one is called for question, you know, I swear. At uh, Adamuna wrote, so we are now practicing a hereditary monarch, uh, mona, monarchical uh, system of government in the Senate. Is it a family uh, heirloom that needs to be inherited? What exactly is going on in this country? Who deems her worthy to decide our fate in this country? Are we using sentiments now? Why can't she go through the same process other Senate went through? Be voted for. Did the people she wants to represent them say they want her? I have so many questions cause because this is just something else. Fred wrote, Niger the town family business small small. People now inherit government positions. Hem hem hem. <laughs> innocent innocent wrote that you guys in the north and soon Lagos are now treating elected political positions as family inheritance, which is why Erufai and so on have their family and kids in federal political offices. It does not mean Southeast or less such. Keep your monarchy system of government up there to yourself. Austin Road. So politics in Nigeria has only become family heritage. At Mayor, it is not a thing of competence. It is family business, and they are no longer bothered dishing out in our faces. These are other headlines we have read this morning, so please interpret it to your own understanding. Like, share, comment, and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos coming your way. Bye for now.